Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to go over how, use, how to use images within Twine. So traditionally, images have been uh, quite a bit of a troublesome issue. Uh, the primary reason for this is that images are extra media. They're not part of the HTML itself, they're outside and they're included in or pointed out through different methods. So although that is the case, you can in fact use images within Twine using the HTML element and some CSS methods. However, Twine doesn't support, quote, using images as part of its editor because HTML and CSS, the, the backbone sort of muscle part of how the Twine editor is built, don't handle binary data, which is what images are. However, there are three ways to include images within a Twine story. Because Twine is built on top of HTML, one easy way to include images is through the use of the image tag, the IMG tag. Or element. The image element uses the source attribute to point to where the image is. Its uniform resource location URL uh, can be either absolute or relative. Those URLs, those URLs that are absolute, start with forward slashes or protocol name like HTTP. Relative URLs, on the other hand, start with referencing the folder or location in which they can be found. So here's an example of an absolute URL. Notice it starts with a protocol HTTPS colon slash slash and extends all the way across the page to which we can't even see it anymore. This is an example of an absolute URL. This is absolutely where this file is found. And in fact, as of the recording, this was the logo for Google. An example of a relative URL, on the other hand, would be something like this. Notice it's relative to something else and it's not absolutely defined. So within the folder images and then a file logo. So to include images in Twine with HTML, using the image element, an example would look like this. That is, we're using the image element and we're using the source attribute and setting it equal to, in quotations, the entire location. Without hosting images on a public server somewhere, however, the best bet for using images, and this is what I generally tell people in Twine, would be in using the desktop version of Twine for development. That way your images can be relative to wherever you're saving files to and you can pull those images in and then package everything else if you want and put it somewhere on a website or host it somewhere else. So here's a general example here of using the image element to include images within Twine. However you can also use CSS to do this. Similar to the image element in HTML, images can be included in a Twine store using CSS. The main way of doing this is in the URL, notice the open uh, and close style rule applied to different elements. Usually this is used within a background, so background image or background with the URL style rule. And I'll show examples here in just a moment. For example, if we wrote a new rule for an element with the following class, Google image, and notice it's a class, so it starts with a period, it might look like the following. So we have the Google image, background image, URL, and equal to the whole thing out here. Now I'm going to pause for just a second to go look at this so we can actually see the formatting. So if we were going to edit the story style sheet within Twine, we would click on the name, in this case using images, go up to edit story style sheet and click on it. And this is the example right here. Notice Google image, it's a class, it starts with a period, open and close brackets, using background image, then the URL, and then the absolute URL in this case, starting with HTTPS and extending through to the file type. So going back here, we can see we can set this, and then we see the result of right here, some content with the background image of that URL. A common issue, however, with using images in CSS and with the URL style rules specifically, as I'm showing right here with some content, is that it applies it to the width and the height of an element. So using the URL with a background image means that the background will be applied to the size of the content. So usually, this also requires additional rules of width and height as needed as well. So you could create an element, give it a class, give it the rules of a background image, and then change the width and height to be the width and height in the image and include the image that way. It's a little more complicated, uh, but you could also do this as part of using the CSS method of including images within Twine. Finally, and much more controversial way of including images in Twine is with Base64 encoded images. So the description Base64 encoded comes from representing an image's binary data as text 
which has a base of 64. That is, all the numbers are converted into a base system of 64. The decimal system, for example, has a base of 10, so base 64 has a base of 64. Anyway, <laughs> base 64 encoded images are often very, very long strings sometimes of text, which can cause a twin story with a great number of them to grow very large, which is why it makes this a controversial way of including images within twine. So whereas it makes them strings, it also extends stories and can make them very, very large. However, because they are text strings, the published HTML result from Twine would not need any other files. So no extra image files would be needed because all of the images would be represented as strings within the Twine HTML itself. As they are represent representations of images, however, Base64 encoded strings need, to need the two previous methods. So either you're using the image element or the URL, uh, either HTML or CSS to include images. For example, here's one using the image element and then here's a preview example using the same way with some content with a background image set to the URL uh, set to the 64 encoded image. So let's go look at the code for a second to go over that. So as I went over when we looked at the HTML method we see the same general code with the image element from HTML and its source attribute set to something and in this case an absolute URL. Now it's a little difficult to use relative URLs because of the online Twine editor which I record these videos in because the images wouldn't be stored anywhere relative to where the code is. For example, the code's on one server on uh, twineArray.org and my images, if I wanted to use them, would be on my local computer which aren't connected to each other. So you need to sort of publicly host something and use its absolute URL. Which I know is a little frustrating um, but it allows you to freely edit Twine files and then if you want to go into development a local place with local images you can use the desktop version uh, for whatever desktop operating system you have. However to come back to the example here we see the exact same thing. So I escaped it so we could look at it and then we see the same example. Image, source attribute, set to an absolute URL. Moving over to the CSS method we see the exact same thing. I demonstrated this when we looked at the story style sheet, but we see the same thing here. Background image set to URL within single quotes and another absolute URL, in this case, of the exact location of the image as of the time of recording for the Google logo of today. And so we see the same implementation right here. We have a division element, a div element, with a class set to Google image which was the class we looked at in the story style sheet. So I'll pause for a minute to go back to that. Click on the name, edit story style sheet, and we see the same style right here where it has a background image set to that location. As we saw right here, this was the example, and we saw the result when it had some content. Right here. And notice it only set it to the contents width and height. So the width was the entire length of the twine element here, and the content height was set to whatever the height was of the actual content. So again, keep that in mind, the same problem again, if you want to use background image with the URL, you will probably have to play with width and height as well. And so finally, talking about base64 encoded images. So as you'll notice, when I pull this up, it produced a very long string. So I downloaded the Google logo for today as an example here and then converted it into a base 64 encoded image. There are a number of different tools online to do that and I won't link to them but you can you can very quickly Google and figure that out um, and then it converts it to this entire string. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and ends down here somewhere. And so as I mentioned this is a very controversial way of doing this so while it will produce the image faithfully, it produces a lot of sort of extra junk data in this passage. And we have this giant chunk of text now as part of this story. And in fact, since I used it again down here as an example using URL, I've included it a second time within the story style sheets. Here as background image using the same method before for CSS with the URL and the same data again. So this will allow you to include images as text wherever you want 
it produces much larger stories with a whole lot of extra text. So sort of uh, beware of that. You could use it if you want, but beware using it a lot is not a good idea because it will make these files very large. And so we have three different ways of using images then. We can use the HTML, which uses the image element. And we set uh, a source to something, either absolute or relative URL. We can use the CSS method, which uses the URL method within some type of style rules, keeping in mind, of course, that the background of the image of the element will be set to its content height, uh, as well as using the third uh, base64 encoded images, which is, again, uh, be very careful of using that because it can make stories very long because we're talking about including a whole very long string sometimes for very large images uh, proportionally. But it's three different methods of using images. We can use image uh, element, we can use CSS, we can use base64 encoded images, and then finally we can actually wrap all of that within our existing functionality as part of Harlow as an example here, or using the other story formats of wrapping all these three different ways within the existing functionality we already have. So if we wanted to image the show, we could use a click macro or a link macro or a link repeat macro or any of those combinations of things as content within the macros and the hooks to reveal or do different things in the same way. So it's just a matter of thinking about images as a version of content and then wrapping that content in however we wanted to create those programmed reactions. Thanks for watching.